Hey guys, welcome to my commercial service calculation. We're going to be going through a school calculation using the optional method. This is part of my crash course series because I'm going to go at a pretty good clip through this and I will show you every step along the way, but I'm not going to get into each detail of all those steps uh, in this video. I do have a deep dive series that goes into great detail and shows you every code reference and everything you need to know on where the information comes from. Please refer to that video. I'll have a link at the end of the video for that. Now this is the 220 code cycle for the NEC, so if you are under a different code cycle, please just be aware that this is for 220, even though most of this information is going to be good for most code cycles going back at least several, because they don't change Article 220 very often, and when they do, they don't change it by very much. So just be aware of that. So Article 220, Section 86 is where we talk about schools, and this is the optional method of calculating a school service. So we are under part four in article 220. We'll read this right here. 220.86 schools. The calculation of a feeder or service load for schools shall be permitted in accordance with table 220.86 in lieu of part three of this article. Where equipped with electric space heating, air conditioning, or both. So just a quick note, that's very important because we cannot use this optional calculation if we do not have at least one of either electric space heating or air conditioning. We've got to have one or both of those. Otherwise, we've got to use a standard method for calculating the school. Okay, it goes on to say, the connected load to which the demand factors of table 220.86 apply shall include all of the interior and exterior lighting, power, water heating, cooking, other loads, and the larger of the air conditioning load or space heating load within the building or structure. So we're going with the connected load of basically everything in the building or on the premises here. And the only exception is we're taking the larger of the air conditioning or space heating. So we'll be leaving the lesser of those two out, but taking everything else. And that's going to give us our connected load. That is what we're going to apply to table 220.86. And we'll do that at the end. So real quick over here, I've made this table. To put this in a very simple format, makes it very easy. We're going to start with a square footage of a building. We're going to get our multiplier to find our minimum lighting load. Then we're going to take all of our loads, add them up get everything calculated to get our connected load. And then after that, we're going to plug it into table 220.86, just like we talked about over here, and find our total demand for the school. And once we get that, we'll have our total building VA. Then we can divide by our voltage, and that'll give us our server size in amps. Okay, before we move on, let's finish this off. It says feeders and service conductors whose calculated load is determined by this optional calculation shall be permitted to have the neutral load determined by 220.61. That's pretty standard. Most calculations allow you to use 220.61 to size your neutral load. Not all, but most do. Okay, it says where the building or structure load is calculated by this optional method, feeders within the building or structure shall have ampacity as permitted in part three of this article. However, the ampacity of an individual feeder shall not be required to be larger than the ampacity for the entire building. So they're just saying any feeders inside the building, not the service feeder, but anything inside the building, will be permitted to be calculated by part three. Remember, this is in lieu of part three for the service, but for feeders inside the building, you can use part three. Okay, last thing, it says this section shall not apply to portable classroom buildings. All right, that's pretty straightforward. Okay, now we're going to take an example and we're going to plug our example data into this table step by step and see how this plays out. All right, so here's our example. We have a school. It's an 82,000 square foot school and we got a bunch of loads here. Various loads. These are pretty typical for schools. We do have a kitchen, so there's going to be some cooking equipment and such. It tells us what our service is. 208 volt, three phase. And then I'm not going to read through this because we're going to have this example on each page as we go forward. Okay, here it is over here, our example with all the data. And we have our table back here. And we're going to start with our square footage of our building. In 220.12, that tells us our starting point is square footage. We have 82,000 square foot, so we're going to just stick that number right in there. Next, we're going to find out our multiplier, and we're going to go to table 220.12. Right here, it says general lighting loads by non-dwelling occupancy. We're going to head down this list of occupancy types and find school right there. And it tells us that so we have three volt amps per square foot. We're going to put three right here, multiply it by 82,000. And we're going to come up with a minimum lighting load of 246,000 VA. 
Once we have the minimum lighting load, we get on to our other loads. And this is going to be most everything else in our calculation is going to fall into this category. So in this section, I have A, B, D, E, F, and G of 220.14. And the reason I did that was I split out some of these like H, I, L, and C over here because there's specific calculations that are needed for these particular parts. So I have those pulled out so we can address those independently. And then I have the largest motor at the very end because it's much easier to find your largest motor once you have all your other loads established. You can see them on the table. So back over here, we're going to get into our specific loads. And over here, we have 1,200 watts of parking lot lighting, 8,000 watts of specialty lighting. I just combine those together in specific lighting, and it's 9,200 VA. We've got water heaters, seven of those, 38,500 VA. We've got a compactor, soda machines, hand dryers, hoop lifts. So we're just adding all these miscellaneous loads together. Then we have kitchen equipment, same thing. We're just going to take all of our kitchen equipment and add everything together. We've got a bunch of it, 73,400 VA worth, in fact. Then we're going to get on to our heating and cooling, and I kind of pulled those down in their own section down at the bottom because we're going to compare the two together. And it's just easier if I split them apart a little bit. So we have heating at 180,000 because of these six heating units here, and we have cooling at 90,000. We're going to take the larger of these two, that's why I have this shaded in kind of this tannish yellow color here, because you treat this a little separately. You got to compare these two together, take the largest of the two. Once you have that, I have it in bold here, and you just add all these bold numbers together. You come up with a subtotal of 569,580 VA. We're going to take that subtotal and we're going to slide it right up here to the top of this column. We're going to continue with our other loads from 220.14 here. We got H, which is fixed multi-outlet assemblies. We don't have any in our example, so there's a zero there. Receptacle outlets, we have 45,360 VA. So we're going to stick that there. Other outlets, we don't have any. Now we're going to get to our largest motor. And we're just going to go through the whole building and find out what our largest motor is. And once we find that, which in this case is going to be one of our cooling units, so just one of our cooling units is 15 kW, 25% of that is 3750, so we stick that right there. And that finishes up our other load, so now that we have that, we can add all these together. We take our subtotal plus our receptacle outlets plus our 25% extra of our largest motor, and we come up with a total branch circuit load of 618,690 VA. And that is our connected load. And if you remember back to the beginning, we were trying to establish our connected load first. And so now we've done that. All right, now that we have our connected load, we can go on to table 220.86 and apply our number there. But first, we've got to establish our total VA per square foot. Table 220.86 says optional method, demand factors for feeders and service conductors for schools. All right, so we have a connected load here in BA per square foot. And then we have a demand factor over here. So we've got to take the first three VA per square foot at 100%. Then we're going to take the next three through 20 VA per square foot at 75%. And then anything over that we would take at 25%. Okay, so let's see how this is going to work. First, we've got to establish what is our total VA per square foot. Well, I've got this little table over here just for that purpose. We're going to take our connected load, which is 618, 690. We're going to take our building square foot, which is 82,000. We're going to divide our connected load by our building square foot. And that is going to give us our total VA per square foot. And ours ends up being 7.5 VA per square foot. So now it tells us we take the first three at 100%. So to get the first three, we take our square footage, 82,000. We multiply by that first three and we get 246,000. Now, just a little side check, your minimum lighting load is gonna be the same number every time because in a school, your multiplier is three and the first three VA per square foot is what we're taking in our first line here. So it's always gonna be the same number, so that's just kind of a way to double check you're doing things right. Or you're doing them both wrong, <laughs> I guess. But anyway, next step, is second line so we got our first three there now we're going to take the next section three through 20 so the next 17 basically 
Next 17 VA per square foot multiplier is going to be 4.5 because we had 7.5. We already used the first three. That leaves us 4.5 left over. We're going to multiply that by our building square foot again. And that gives us 369,000 VA. But if you remember right here, this line can be taken at 75%. So we take 75% of 369,000 and we get 276,750. And I have these two in bold again because those two are going to get added together now to get 522,750. And that is our total building VA. And you can see we shaved off almost 100,000 VA by using this table for a demand factor. So that's a substantial reduction in our service size. So there's a lot of cost savings in wire and conduit, not to mention all the labor. All right, we divide by our voltage, taking into consideration that this is three phase. In this case, we have 208 volts, so we're gonna multiply 208 times the square root of three, and then we're gonna divide that number into 522,750, and we're gonna get 1,452 amps, and that is our service size. Okay, now here's the same table, but I've taken all the data out of it and I've taken the color out of it, or at least most of it, so that you can screenshot this, you can print it out, you can use this as a worksheet, study guide, whatever you wanna do, have at it, it's yours to use for your enjoyment. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching. If you thought this was helpful to you, please give me a like down there. Also subscribe to my channel. That helps other people find it also that are maybe needing the same kind of information. Also, let me know what else you might want to see on a channel, and I'll see if I can make that happen. All right, well, thanks again, and hey, guys, don't forget, stay free.